Hey, good morning. Today's Bible study comes from your Pathway Sunday School book uh, for December 9th. It's called Keep Your Promises. The printed passage is Joshua 24, 1 through 3, 13 through 15, and 21 through 24. Background scripture is Exodus 20, 1 through 11, and devotional reading is Psalm 81. Oh, and the whole background scripture is also Joshua 24. And it reads as follows. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. But Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac. So I gave you a land on which you did not toil and cities you did not build and you live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Verse 14. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Verse 15, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my husband's household, we will serve the Lord. Verse 21, but the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and we will obey him. Amen. Now let's break it down. Verse 24, then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the, I'm sorry, Chapter 24, verse 1. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Um, this is when Joshua assembled the representatives of all the tribes. Not all the tribes were there. If you look back in Numbers chapter 1, 5 through 15, you can see where it started with these men. But Numbers 1 and 16 states, these were the men appointed from the community, the leaders of their ancestral tribes. They were the heads of the clans of Israel. So these men were the heads of the tribes and not the entire tribe. Now the city of Shechem also held special meaning because remember that this is the city of the covenant between God and Abraham. And if you look at Genesis 12, 6 through 7, it reads, whoops, excuse me. Abraham traveled through the land as far as the sites of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. At that time of the Canaanites were in the land, the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. The other thing here is that Joshua was on his last leg and needed strength from the Lord. So don't think and don't ever think that your job is done even when you are close to thinking it's done. Joshua had one more thing to do for the Lord and that was to serve his people until death. You can see that Joshua made a covenant for the people as his last duty. Joshua chapter 24 verses 25 through 26 say, On that day Joshua made a covenant for the people and there at Shechem he reaffirmed for them decrees and laws. And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. Then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak near the holy place of the Lord. Verse two, Joshua said to all the people, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, long ago your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor lived beyond the Euphrates river and worshiped other gods. Joshua starts speaking to the ancestry of the people and how they worshiped other gods. Joshua includes Terah because Terah begot Abram, who later became Abraham. And when Abraham met the one and true God after 75 years of paganism, he was obedient and faithful. And you can read that in Hebrews 11, 8 through 12 and through Genesis. But 
Hebrews really talks about his faithfulness. Um, this just reminds the people that the Lord has been keeping all of his promises to the faithful. It also shows a generational reward that keeps moving through generations as long as we are faithful. God spoke of Christ in the beginning in the garden, so God's promises have all been fulfilled through Christ. If you look at 2 Corinthians 1, 19 through 20, it says, For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Verse 3 says, But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates, and led him throughout Canaan, and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac. This is a huge verse because it speaks to what God did as another promise. I took Abram out of the adulterous place, and I took him into an acquaintance and covenant with myself, meaning with God himself which was the highest honor and happiness he was capable of. And God led him after his father's death into Canaan. Uh, Genesis 12, 1 says, The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land, and I will show you. Then God protected him in all his travels through the several parts of Canaan, gave him a huge family, not only by Hagar and Keturah, but even by Sarah, who was barren and old, and they had Isaac, and Isaac had huge family. Joshua speaks about the mercy and grace of God when he states that God removed him from the land beyond the Euphrates, and then God blessed him. Then he states that I give him Isaac, and forget the fact that his wife was barren and they were old. God is good that Isaac's name had meaning, and God gave Abraham the name. And then you can look that up in Genesis ooh, excuse me, 17, 19. God kept his promise. The Lord continued to keep his promises, and God is normally waiting on us to get right so that we can receive his promises. Deuteronomy 7, 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. The true question is, can you be still and wait for his promises to come into your life? That's hard for us. Verse 13 says, So I gave you a land on which you did not toil, and cities you did not build, and you live in them, and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Joshua speaks to the Lord, giving them this promised land, and there was nothing the Israelites had to do to receive it. This was all because of God. Remember that the Lord afflicted the Egyptians in verse 5. In verse 8, God delivered you from Amorites and Wimbalah. In verses 9 and 10, <laughs> came to speak on you. He could not say anything bad. All he could do was bless you over and over. In verse 11, everybody was on your back, and God handled that. And I is God. But the truth of the matter is, what is stated in verse 12. Joshua 24, 12 says, I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove them out before you. Also the two Amorite kings, you did not do it with your own sword or bow. They did not have to fight because God was protecting, fulfilling, and keeping his promise to the people. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Before I die, people, this is Joshua, please realize that the one and only living God that has protected you, guided you, and been faithful to you is the only one that you should serve. The fear that is spoken is a reverence because of who God is and what God has done. If you look at Psalm 33, 8, it says, Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. That's believing and non-believing. You should revere the Lord because where would you be without him? But there is still a problem. Joshua had to address them about throwing away the gods of their ancestors because some practiced following the Lord publicly, but at home they were worshiping as their ancestors did, and some still practiced publicly. Think about when Moses came down with the tablets. What were they doing? 
We are unfaithful and ungrateful, and I am just so glad that we take that we can't take God out of being who he is, and that is faithful. If you look at Ezekiel chapter 23, you'll see in verses 3, 8, 19, 21, and 27, we still had these gods on the brain, and they were still worshiping them. Um, and you can read those verses, Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 3, verse 8, verse 19, verse 21, and 27. But I'll just read verse 3 so you can see how bad we were. They became prostitutes in Egypt, engaging in prostitution from their youth. In that land, their breasts were fondled and their virgin bosoms caressed. Oh, here, I, I got to read 21 too, I'm sorry. So you long for the lewdness of your youth. When in Egypt your bosom was caressed and your young breasts fondled. Verse 15 says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose from yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me, my household will serve the Lord. This is a conversation that pretty much says that you can only serve one Lord. And he says undesirable. In King James it says evil. And that is a strong word because all that God has done for them has been desirable and good for them. So if you don't like being led out of bondage, being protected, placed in a land that you didn't have to do anything for, or see your battles being fought for you, then go ahead and do like your ancestors of old. But Joshua says, I'm serving God, who has done everything that he said he would. Then Joshua says, "I and I serve my household will serve. That's telling you, his slaves, his wife, his children, his animals, they all serve the Lord. But the people said to Joshua, no, we serve the Lord. The Israelites were emphatic and said, no, we will serve the Lord. And why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? Then Joshua said, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Here they renew their choice of Jehovah for their God and king which their forefathers made when they came out of Egypt and acknowledged they should feel guilty. They should feel guilty if they do not make it with God. They have to go to who is being good to them. Verse 23, Now then Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. Since you have stated whom you will follow, then throw away thoughts and ways of the other fake gods from their customs to their idols and submit your hearts to the Lord. Psalm 37, 5 and 6 says, Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Verse 24, And the people said to Joshua, We will serve the Lord our God and obey him. Joshua made a covenant with the people that day to make good on what they said and to remember the covenant of Moses where they promised to worship God and only God and to be obedient to him. And if you go to Exodus 20, verses 1 through 8, those speak to the commandments where we go to God. We do unto the Lord. Honor him. Make him first. Read those, those uh, commandments and see what we are supposed to do to God. And God is so good that he didn't even make most of the commandments go to him. They were actually blessings for us where we were to love one another and don't covet and don't steal and all, don't lie to one another. So the Lord was thinking about us at all times. And his promises have been kept at all times. Amen.